Your fifth studio album, Young Modern, was released in the U.S. on July 24th and was your first album in over five years. How has the band evolved since Diorama and how, has, how does this album differ from all your past albums? Um, I, I guess it was, uh, well for us it felt like the real natural progression from Diorama, I, you know, Diorama, Diorama was very much about escapism and, um, you know, I think this album was the first time that we'd, um, um, you know, really like, I mean we've always enjoyed being in the band but I think this is the first album that, um, um, you know, that we've just really just had a really good time with it and tried not to think about the pressures of making an album and, and just tried to make the you know, the best music that we could make. But um and musically uh, um, you know, I think part of the attraction to Silver Show is the fact that we keep changing and pushing ourselves and um and seeing how you know you know what boundaries we can kind of push and, and you know I don't think we're the the most you know we're the, we're not the most technical musicians in the world but I think when we play together um, you know I think we you know something seems to click and um, yeah but I, I don't know that's it's actually it's 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 always a hard question to answer, to answer because I guess being being in the whole silver chair world to us it just it all feels very natural and and that's kind of you know how everything's happened it's not it wasn't a really conscious thing but you know what we are conscious that we are trying to you know improve on ourselves on and you know on our past work we're always trying to kind of evolve and push ourselves um Daniel co-produced the new album with Nick Launay, who produced your other albums, Freak Show and Neon Ballroom, and David, yep. David Bottrell mixed the album. What was it like? Yep. And what was it like having Daniel co-produce? Oh, it was cool. I mean, I think, um, you know, Dan, Dan actually co-produced um, Diorama as well, and, um, you know, um, his, the, the way he does, you know, the, the, his style of production, I guess, is, um, you know, a lot of it's in the, um, you know, the, the pre going into the studio, actually kind of, you know, figuring out what, you know, what instruments you want to use and, um, and you know, making all, a lot of those kind of creative decisions. And then basically when you get into the studio, it's, it's, it's more about just making that happen and, and, um, you know, I think a lot of producers, like, you know, they might have a few ideas, but I think they kind of figure a lot of, lot of it out when they get in the studio. But, um, you know, Dan's, I mean, he's not like a, he's not a dictator. Like, he, he's, he's pretty, he's pretty cool. Like, you know, we've all got our different roles within the band. And, um, you know, I think um, it's like when you bake a cake, like, there's particular ingredients you need. And I think um, we all kind of had our own little ingredient. But, yeah, you know, Dan's kind of like... It's kind of like we're all pirates on a ship, but Dan's just like, you know, he's the one that's steering it kind of thing. Um, your new single is uh, If You Keep Losing Sleep. How did you go about picking that for the third single, and how did the concept for the video come about? Um, I guess for the, for the third single, we didn't, you know, um, there was talk about using wait all day, uh, waiting all day, sorry, and... Um, I just think for the perception of the album, we didn't want people to think that, you know, it was, um, I don't know, it was a softer kind of mellower album. I think we just felt like, we just felt that If You Keep Losing Sleep was a, a better representation of, of, you know, what the album's about and, and kind of where our heads are at the moment. And um, so, yeah, so that was, you know, that was pretty unanimous. We all felt the same way about that. But, um, and as far as the film group goes, um, um, we just decided to use the same guys that did the um, uh, reflections of a sound video, and um, because you know they, I don't know we just personally we just really click with them and we really like their ideas and you know they were really into a lot of art and stuff that we that we were that we're into and um, so yeah so it was basically we just um, had to come up with a concept that or they came up with a concept and we just had to um, you know refine it a bit to, to get it. So we all liked it, and um, yeah, you know, the, the basis of it is that it's just like a, it's a mad, it's a mad science project that, um, you know, 
that and all this crazy stuff happens and it's like um yeah, I mean, that's the basis of it for me. It's just, I always sort of, it's just like, a, you know, a crazy Einstein project and there's a bit of, you know, and the basis of it is music. Um, you won eight awards at this year's Arias Awards. Congratulations, that's quite an accomplishment. Um, Thank you. How do you feel about winning those awards and uh, will this open new doors for you? Um, yeah, you know, we're, we're, we're really happy to, um, to have won Aries. I mean, in Australia, I guess it's the, um, I mean, it's not quite the, Gra it's not the Grammys, but because Australia doesn't really have a Grammys, because I think, you know, the Grammys are almost, you know, you don't have to be American to be nominated for a Grammy, where it's more like this, the Aries is kind of more like the American Music Awards, and, um, yeah, you know, to kind of, to, to kind of go along and, and basically, um, be the biggest winners on the night, it's always a, it's always nice to have recognition for, um, you know, the music that you've made and, and all the hard work that you've put into it. And, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it doesn't really translate into, you know, anything super, super special other than, you know, you just get that nice recognition and, you know, it helps sell, uh, you know, a few more records. So um, it just helps get your music out there a bit more, which is ultimately what, you know, everyone in the band is trying to do is just get it out there. Um, your North American tour ends in about a week, and then you'll be do performing the big day out at the um, end of January. What are the band's plans after that? Will you be doing more tours or begin writing new, more new material? Yeah, I think um, um, yeah, we're all going to go home and enjoy you know a few weeks off over Christmas and New Year's. Um, and then, yeah, the big day out, and then uh, hopefully um, we'll get back to America, actually. that's what I think that's what the plans are, and, and um, you know, there seems to be a real buzz in this country about the band at the moment, and, um, you know, a lot of people are discovering the band for the first time or rediscovering the band, you know, and, and also I think um, a, lot of, a lot of people's perception about the band is kind of changing as well, which is, you know, one of the biggest struggles and one of the biggest things we're trying to do in this country because a lot of people have always referred to us and thought of us as the teen grunge sensation from Australia and you know obviously anyone that's a, a, a major fan or you know aware of music would know that you know that's you know we're, we're years and years and years beyond that and we haven't been that band for a long time and and it's good you know it feels like people are but it's it's actually starting to sink in that we're um that we've moved on and we're we're a different band and people are accepting it. So um you know any more chances that we can kind of come back here and and, and keep doing that and hopefully you know by the next record be you know re-established as a, as you know just a silver chair and not pigeonholed and kind of like we are in Australia. You know I don't think anyone in Australia particularly thinks of us as anything. They're just like we're just silver chair and and um you know I think. It's, yeah, like I said before, I think the attraction to the band is um, the fact that we don't, we aren't, we, you can't pigeonhole us, we, we kind of, you know, we like to mix things up. We get very bored very easily, so, but anyway, so yeah, hopefully we'll be back um, after the big day out, you know, sometime, some, sometime around March next year, and, and I, I guess after that, you know, we'll probably be coming toward the end of the, the album cycle for um, for Young Modern, and I think the plan is this time to, to hopefully get something out a lot quicker and, and you know, kind of capitalise on all the, all the groundwork that we've done on this record. If you could tour with anyone dead or alive, who would it be and why? Um... I'll oh, probably let Zeppelin, just because they're, you know, arguably my all-time favourite band, so, you know, that that would be, um, that'd be pretty cool. With, bon with John Bonham on drums, uh, nothing against Jason Bonham, he's still really good, but, um, you know, John Bonham's a bit of a hero, so, um, yeah, probably let, Ze let Zeppelin. Um, the band has been together for over 13 years now. What has been the most memorable performance thus far in your career? Um, well, the, the, we, when we played, I think we were about 22, we played um, uh, Rock in Rio in uh, South America, and that was, you know, uh, that just sticks so clearly out in my mind. It was one of the craziest experiences, you know, the, the audience was like 250,000 or something like that. 
So that was, um, and you know, and we were second headlining too on, on the, the night that we played because it's over five days and they have like a pop day. Nothing like NSYNC and Britney Spears played and, and all these other days. Like they had a heavy metal day and Metallica played, but we actually played on the closing night and we second headlined to um, the Chili Peppers and. Um, yeah, and, you know, we just had a really great gig and, and the crowd went crazy and, you know, you, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have wanted to be the person right at the back of the show, at the, you know, the 250,000, it basically wouldn't have meant anything really, just a couple of little matchsticks running around on stage, but, um, yeah, that was, you know, that was a pretty, um, a pretty amazing experience and, but, um, you know, apart from that, I mean, making Young Modern was, um, you know, I guess just being a little bit older and everyone knows their roles in the band and, you know, have accepted their roles in the band and, and um, you know, there's, you know, we've all kind of figured out bit each other's, like, egos and all that stuff that, uh, you know, we can just enjoy it now, which, and it's, that's, I guess that's why on this record we've, um, we've had them, yeah, on this record we've had the most fun that we've ever had, so, yeah, even re rehearsing for this record, we, um, we hired these um, rural houses, like just in the sticks in New South Wales, in Australia, and you know, the, in the middle of nowhere, there was nothing around. And you know, we went out there and rehearsed all the new songs, and you know, and obviously with anything new and fresh, it's really exciting. And and every night, you know, we'd um we'd like start a little, you know, someone would go out when the sun was going down and start a fire. There was a big dam there, and we'd run down and go swim in the dam, and then you know, we cook up some dinner and talk about the rehearsal we did during the day and the songs and, you know, have a few beers or whatever, then, you know, maybe at 2 o'clock in the morning we'd, we'd, um, you know, if we're talking about a particular song or a particular part or whatever, we'd get really excited about it and we'd just, you know, because we're in the middle of nowhere, we could run inside and, and um, you know, make not, like as much noise as we want at like 2 or 3 in the morning and so that, you know, that was what, that was a pretty cool experience and, yeah, I'm, it's, yeah, I mean, we've been really lucky and we feel really fortunate and that um, we've, we've had the opportunities that we've had, so it's all good. Um, your music has changed a lot since you released Frog Stomp. How do you see your music evolving? From here? What? Or just in general, you mean? Just in general. Okay. Um, how do I see it evolving? Jeez, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess, um, you know, when you're 14 years old, um, you've still got a lot of learning to do and a lot of life experience, like life experiences to be had. And um, you know, I think it was inevitable that we were going to change and and um, evolve and and kind of become what we've become now. And you know, what I've been saying to a lot of people, like, there's so many folks on purists that just you know don't want us to change and they just want us to play tomorrow and. Um, you know, and, and pure massacre, and, and they don't want us to do anything different. But, you know, what I've kind of said to those people is, like, you know, are you a Beatles fan? And I'm not saying we're the Beatles or comparing us to the Beatles, but, you know, if you look at those guys, they started off doing, like, um, you know, like, Please, Please Me and Help, and, you know, these little guitar kind of pop songs. And, you know, if you look where they ended up, like, you know, on, like, um, you know, on the White Album or on uh, Sgt. Pepper's, you know, like... Um, Inevitably, like, you know, I think all the, all, the, all the really good bands, you know, they evolve and they change and and um, and they do things differently and they, they keep it exciting and fresh, just not for themselves, but for the fans and the listeners as well. I think, um, I think it's, you know, I think it's really important for every band to, to try and do something new and exciting and, and a, bit, a little bit out of the box, a little bit out of their comfort zone. I, there's so many bands around these days, and particularly being in, the, in America, like there's, it just feels like there's so many bands that sound exactly the same, and and um, you know there's so many bands that just put out the same album one after the other, and I don't know. So it, it, to me, it just feels like banging your head up against a brick wall would just be so boring. But um, yeah, so I think you know it's just it's just part of our makeup. I think we're always striving to to make better music and you know and if that means that we change and do things differently each time and I guess that's just you know I, I think that's just embedded in us it's not really a conscious thing it just um you know that just happens we just we're just constantly striving and try, trying to push the envelope and um you know you know, like with the writing and with our individual playing and everything, we're just, um, you know, just trying to stay on the, you know, on the edge, I guess, and not get, not get, uh, 
you know, can't not get not, not get too comfortable with ourselves. Is there a band in Australia that you think people should know about in 2008? Yeah, there's a couple of guys actually. He was the old. Um, he, he played key keyboards for um, Silver Chair for a little while, and he actually co-wrote um, some of the tracks on Young Modern with Daniel. And his name um, is Julian Hamilton, and the other guy in the band, Kim Moyes, um, M O Y E S. Um, yeah, they've got a band called The Presets, and um, yeah, I think um, I reckon in 2008 they could be a, a force to be to be reckoned with. I reckon they they're going to be um, they're going to be a pretty big a big deal. I, I, you know, it, definitely in Australia, but it'll be interesting how they how they go um, over here in the US because you know they've definitely got you know that um, international sound, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um. Is there anything you'd like to add that maybe we didn't cover in this interview? No, oh, geez, I reckon we covered quite a bit of ground in a short amount of time. <laughs> um, thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview. Yeah, no worries. Okay. Um, thanks. Okay. <laughs> Radio, well, have a good night. Um, okay. Yeah, I was just turning off speakerphone.